I want to consider another example of the use of counting principles to compute probabilities. In particular, I want to consider the classical birthday problem. This is a problem, uh, this is a uh, trick uh, sometimes used by uh, magicians and things like this to warm up an audience. So you've got a certain number of people in a room, and I'm just going to use 25 here as an example up here. And the magician will go around, and he'll, so you've got all these people. And we'll start asking birthdays. Okay, February the 8th, uh, September uh, 28th, uh, May 4th, etc. Uh, until he finds someone which has a duplication of, of that birthday and he declares, declares a success. Now, what we want to do is to look at the situation where we have 25 people here and we want to look at the probability that at least two are going to have the same birthday and see that the, the trickster here has got a better than a 50% chance of, of being correct. Okay, so... Um, what do we want to calculate? We want to calculate the probability that um, at least two people have the same birthday in the group here. Okay, now if you think about these, it will think about assigning, we've got 25, 25 slots here, and we're going to assign a day of the year to each one of these 25 slots. Okay, so uh, if we want to determine whether there's going to be a match, in other words, uh, a birthday out here might be May the 4th, and one of the earlier ones was also May the 4th. So that would be a match. Now, if to find at least one match, it means there could be a lot. There could be exactly one, or there could be two, three, four, five, six. There could be a lot of different ways. And so we don't want to look at each of those numbers separately. Um, a typical way to handle such a problem is to look at the complementary problem. In other words, if we looked at one and subtract from that the probability that it's not the case that at least two people have the same birthday. Well, what does it mean to say that it's not the case that at least two people have the same birthday? Well, that would mean that actually there would be no matches, right? Uh, it means that, I can spell match, okay, no matches. All right, so if, there's no two people have the same birthday. Uh, if we find that number, then the complementary value would be the probability that at least two would have the same birthday. Okay, so let's go and try to calculate uh, this number right here. All right, so the probability of uh, no two have the same birthday No two birthdays the same. I'll just say BD for birthday. Okay, so what do we really mean here? If they no two, what we, we really mean if we look at that is that they're all different. Okay, so uh, that's what we're going to compute. Now, let's see, you know, how can we consider that? If they're all going to be different, you know, think about fraction here. Okay, so what does that mean? We start with the first one. How many choices do we have there? Well, if it takes 365 days and years, there's 365 for there. And then if the second person has got to be different from the first, then there can only be 364 possible values that will fit in there that will meet that criteria. The next one will have to be different from the first two days were shown, so it would be 363, and we could continue on down this list uh, 25 times. Well, so what's the last one going to be? Well, if I subtract 25 from uh, 365, 
Okay, that's going to be uh, 340. Okay, so the last one down here that we would use would be 341. Okay, so that is my uh, numerator, be the product of all those things. Now, what about the denominator? Well, how many total possibilities do we have here? Well, the total possibilities would be 365, and we can use that for each of the days, so that would be to the 25th power. Well, uh, obviously, I don't want to go and actually do a calculation like this. That's going to be a really laborious sort of thing. Um, how can we calculate that? Well, if we recognize the numerator here, this numerator is just one of these uh, standard functions that we looked at. It's the permutations of 365 days in this case. And we're going to choose the first 25 of these. So that's normally uh, written in this way, calculated right is slightly different. The denominator then is, we've got that 365 to the 25th power. OK, so that's a little more succinct way of writing it and actually makes it uh, reasonable so that I can calculate this on, on a calculator. All right, let's see what we can do here. Uh, all right, see, see what I'm doing uh, now. So let's calculate the uh, 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 probab uh, permutations of 365 taken 25 times. Go to math. And remember, it's over on the right-hand side here. And the permutations is the second function. So we'll add 25. OK, well, I don't want to. I could do the whole thing in one line, but let's do it separately. Well, you see, that's going to be like 10 to the 63rd. So it's, we're going to divide that big number by another big number, namely 365 raised to the 25th power. OK, well, now that's a uh, uh, point uh, four three one three okay okay so what was so this was the uh, probability that they were all different what's the original question here what's the probability of at least uh, two the same it's going to be 1 minus 0.43, uh, we can call it 1. Well, I can probably do that in my head, right? That's going to be 0.569. We could use the calculator for that. So you see here with 25 people in a room, the, uh, the person uh, has a better than a 50% chance of being correct or of, of actually finding a pair of matches. And as I said, this illustrates, again, uh, using the permutation uh, operation together with powers here. Thanks for watching.